Hey, what's happening guys? Mike Moo here. First of all, Merry Christmas. I'm really sorry that I haven't been keeping up to date with a lot of my YouTube videos. Just been busy, what can I say? All right, so uh, I just wanted to say real briefly that uh, for Cyber Monday and Black Friday, this is easily one of the best deals that I've actually come across. And since this is still being recorded before Christmas, if you're still able to get this, I think a good price for this is roughly around 300 US dollars. Uh, this is of course the Hisense Roku TV. And this particular model is the 55R6040F, and it is technically 54.6 inches uh, all the way across. But um, I got this on Cyber Monday or Black Friday week for about $200 plus tax and you know all the fees and regulations that you gotta pay for here in California. And I wasn't expecting much, but I'm pleasantly surprised at how good this TV is. So um, if you just want a quick spiel about this, it's, it's got the 4K, it's got high dynamic range 10.0, uh, 10, which is uh, the, the range for brighter, richer contrast, and it really shows. It actually has really good sound. I'm, I'm really surprised by this. So uh, I can feasibly see, um, without using this, I have it on right now, without a sound bar, and you actually get really decent sound. So you can hold off on getting that sound bar, even though sound bars are uh, really relatively cheap. So, um, and it's got built-in Roku. That's one of the big selling points. Granted, that's just about maybe like a $40 value or so, but I'm really, I have, I was a Roku user very early on, and um, it was impressive back then. The interface looks a little bit dated for sure compared to some of the other stuff, but it supports so much, and it's fast, easy to navigate, and I mean easy because my parents can navigate it, and we all know how our parents are when they're using new technology, and they work just fine. Plus, um, you know, it's got Sling TV, which supports a lot of international channels. The setup and everything uh, was ready to go in about 20 minutes or so. You're gonna go ahead and watch this as I unbox it and give you some of my first impressions, but really, I, I'm very impressed with this. Uh, the picture, the quality, everything right out of the box far exceeds what I would expect for about the, the three, two to two to five hundred dollar range. Granted, five hundred dollars, you probably get a bigger TV and a little bit more of an upgrade. But I wouldn't hesitate to get this as a secondary TV, maybe not your primary TV. So I'm going to have this set up over in the bedroom uh, so that uh, my wife can watch the streaming channels at night. But Highly recommend it. Um, I'll have links down below to Amazon. This is this. I don't know what the price is right now, so you should probably check it out and see what the price is right now. But I, I feel like if you're if you get this for around three hundred dollars, that's a good deal. Okay, so onwards with the rest of the video. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll just go into unboxing. This is just going to be a quick little time lapse section of the unboxing. I don't unbox a lot of TV sets. Uh, because I just don't buy a whole lot, these tend to last a really long time. But for this particular TV, I just want to mention that you are just going to want to make sure you have a screwdriver with a really thin head and long enough neck to go ahead and screw in the stands. I'm going to mount this on the wall though. Pretty much most households have a screwdriver, so you just need two screwdrivers and you're going to screw in uh, maybe four to six screws on here. You got the user manual with the remote control, and it's nice that that batteries are actually included, which it just takes two AA batteries. Um, so it's it's pretty standard stuff that you might want to prepare if you don't already already uh, have um, just a screwdriver. And they don't give you any cables in here, so if you need HDMI cables, it's something you're, you're probably going to want to pre-order right away. And what surprised me also is that there's no plastic film all across the front of the screen, but that's that's okay, because the screen came out nice. It didn't have any scratches on it. There are a few pieces of tape around it uh, just to protect the edges and the corners of it. But other than that, um, you know, there were no no issues at all with the screen. And I think I picked this up over at Target for Black Friday. All right, so uh, there's a power cord, a standard two prongs. You don't need a ground circuit in there, and you got these these two legs that you can go ahead and fit down below, but you're going to want to either flip it carefully. You should probably get some help to do this. Um, I just laid it up against the box at an angle and proceeded to try to go ahead and screw these in with a uh, screwdriver. And I, I quickly found out that my screwdriver didn't have... Uh, the neck was actually too thick, so I had to go and switch and get an adapter. If you get a just regular cheap screwdriver, that'd be fine. But I went ahead and switched and got my uh, powered screwdriver because, you know, that's what I like. And this I got from Amazon Prime, uh, Prime Day. 
if you want to check out my site, mike.moo, uh, I actually talk about a lot of these deals that I go ahead and, and get. Uh, although a lot of times I don't do the reviews right away because I feel like when you're when you're reviewing something, you really should be using it for a while before you can claim that you are reviewing the product. Otherwise, the first impressions, that's generally what I call these. So installing the, um, you know, the, the feet really takes just a couple of minutes. It's faster if you actually have some help. I apologize for the mess in, in the family room. We are definitely gearing up for Christmas and we've just got stuff all over the place. Okay, so powering on, this actually needs to boot up kind of like a PC. And it, um, it, it actually now takes a while to boot. It's not like a TV where you turn it on, it's ready to go. This first time takes maybe a minute or so. And then after that, uh, you can go into the whole Roku TV ecosystem, which is all part and integrated in the TV. You, you, you don't really separate that. But I, I like it. It's definitely modern. It's definitely up to date. And uh, I've never had a built-in Roku TV before. But I imagine if you got a Roku and plugged it into your TV and set it up, uh, it's just very similar okay in this case the environment has two different options you got home use and you got store use and the only difference there is that for the store use they're just going to show a bunch of demos um, on a screen here i am uh, <laughs> just trying to configure the uh my um obs bot uh to the right angle and i'm not i'm not getting it right on my uh on my phone all right so what comes next is there's an ethernet port in there and uh, for the most part, you're going to want to uh, you want to take advantage of the internet, okay? So uh, you're going to want to download updates. And while there may be some apps already downloaded, ready to go, you're really not going to be able to take full advantage of this whole TV and ecosystem without connecting it to the internet. You're going to want to download some apps. And since I haven't used Roku in a while, you know I forgot the way the sequence of this um, goes. Right, so after it connects, it's going to check to see if there's any updates. And what's good or bad about the TV, depending on the way you look at it, is like a computer, there's going to be updates. It's going to fix some security things. It's going to add some features and also potentially remove some features if they didn't have any licensing. So it could be good or bad, depending on whatever situation that you have. All right, but the fact that it has Roku means that all the updates and apps that are going to be available on Roku are are probably most likely going to be available on your TV. Now, this is a big bonus compared to, uh, I'm going to compare it to the Vizio TV that we have up top that we got several years ago, a long, long time ago. And that one had some built-in apps. And it wasn't part of any ecosystem, it was just part of Vizio. And eventually, uh, YouTube... And let's say YouTube, Net, no, YouTube, I think Netflix is still supported, but YouTube and some other ones stopped supporting it. And it just said you just can't use it anymore. So you were just basically on your own. You thought you had a quote unquote smart TV. But in the end of it, turns out that you're on your own uh, when it comes to some of those streaming devices, which is not a big deal. It's just kind of a little bit annoying. Uh, so in order for us to use YouTube and all those other things, we had to connect on to some of the third party things like a Fire TV, uh, a dongle or um, Apple TV in our case. All right. So uh, after you do the update, um, it's going to tell you to activate your TV and you update it through Roku. So keep in mind, this whole thing runs on Roku, right? So you go uh, to the website you log in or you create an activated account, ask you a bunch of questions about, hey, what kind of TV you like to watch? Maybe we can set up some of these uh, channels and apps for you. And so that's what it did. So it figured out that based on my answers, which basically I selected almost everything except for sports because I don't watch a lot of sports. Uh, and it just came up with 83 different channels. That is an insane amount of channels. Looking back, I'm probably going to have to go back and clear those out. But just for the purpose of this test, I kind of wanted to see what would happen. And so that's what happened. So do yourself a favor. If you want a really clean menu system, uh, don't select any anything. Just add them on your own later. So this is really great for beginners, though. Because clearly, if you don't know what to choose, they got 83 selections for you ready to go. And some of these are actually 
uh, you can actually log in and connect it through the website on Roku. And if you can do that, I advise you do it that way. It's it's faster because there's no keyboard on my, on this version of the Roku. Like like some of the Rokus, I remember they used to have a keyboard on on below the remote, and I think you can upgrade to one of those. But uh, the Roku remote they give you is very basic. Okay. What's also pretty special about this is you can upgrade the remote control with a different one and even one that supports uh, headphone output which is really great if you have someone who likes to watch TV and you know it's just going to bother everybody else you could just have them plug in some earphones and plug it directly into remote control and you're good right so that that's pretty cool so the the one the remote that this particular model came with does not have it built into the remote control all right, so that's that could be an upgrade that I'm going to look into sometime next year. Uh, it's going to cost quite a bit, though, especially compared to the price of the TV set, which is only two hundred dollars. OK, so it's adding it's it's adding it's taking a while. It's updating all this stuff um, at this point. You know, you should probably just take a break and come back in 10, 15 minutes. And uh, if you're setting for TV as, as we go along, but um, just let it do its thing. It automatically figures it all out and does it all. So it's pretty much hands off, which I really like. So in this part, I am just speeding this up 600% uh, so you can see how the whole entire process goes. Just again, just like a computer, it's actually updating you, let you know all the updates that it's it's going through. And um, yeah, should be should be finished up real soon. So I'll go ahead and share with you. Oh. By the way, I didn't connect any devices on here yet because I just wanted to test it. And basically, if you got Roku, you're good to go. But I'm I'm obviously gonna going to connect other things, such as the um, Amazon Fire TV. I'm going to connect to later. I'm going to connect my Apple TV. I'll probably connect Xbox and maybe a computer and maybe a Chromecast. Right. So that stuff is not built in. There might be some features that are similar, but the Roku TV will handle just about most of everything. What's also nice is that, as you can see right here, uh, they're actually just showing you an introduction about how to navigate throughout the Roku. And, and it takes a little while since I haven't used a Roku remote in a while. So they actually tell you where all the buttons are and how to navigate through the different things and gives you a little bit of a demo. Okay, here I jump into the uh, TV menu settings. Um, they're actually showing you where to go through some of those things. You can find that directly on the remote control, of course. So I'm going to show you a bit about what's available inside uh, inside the menu interface, which is, of course, all surrounding the Roku um, interface. There is a Roku channel, which features a lot of free stuff and already curated content. That's probably not something I'm going to use a lot. There used to be this other service that I like uh, by D-Link, and it was the Boxy, and that was really cool. But in my case, I'm probably not going to do that. I pretty much know what I want to watch, and I don't sit around and browse. Okay, So they're still demonstrating the different things that you can do. Oh, there's also a Roku mobile app, so you can actually remotely control your uh, TV and also listen through your smartphone. Okay. So when I was talking about upgrading to a Roku remote with the headphone jack, well, actually, technically, you can actually do that from your phone, too. And the app, I believe, is completely free. You don't have to pay extra for it. It just connects through um, to the Roku uh, over your Wi-Fi. Okay, so you do have to both be on the Wi-Fi on there. In here, one thing that I, I'm looking at this, I'm reminding myself now is that I'm going to go ahead and install Plex TV because I have a Plex TV server here at home so that uh, I have the bandwidth limitation of the internet. And it's pretty annoying when you want to stream a bunch of things. And my wife just likes to stream a bunch of old TV shows over and over again. That just eats up bandwidth unnecessarily when we have bandwidth cap. So what I went ahead and did was I used a play on uh, media services and server. And I just go ahead and have that go ahead and record and download the shows that I like legally on my system. And I'm just going to send it out Plex. Here I'm just demonstrating the themes and screensavers options that are already built in, ready to go uh, after you do the update. 
there's some fun stuff in here. I think some of the coolest stuff is still going to be uh, the screensavers that Apple TV has, which is probably what I'm going to be using most of the time. But it's nice to see that they have a lot of selection here. That's not something that uh, that the Apple TV or Fire TV seem to have in terms of the depth and the breadth of this, since I think Roku predated both of those types of systems. So they both have these. And all these here that I see are actually free. I'm sure you can you can pay extra for some of these other ones. Um, I, I know for the Apple TV, they have some really, really amazing content on there for screensavers of all things. And that gets pretty pricey. Okay, so they, it kind of works kind of like an app and, you know, the screensaver type of app that you can go ahead and set it up. I like I really like the accessibility settings. Uh, there are audio guides, which I did not try, but this is this would be fantastic for people who just don't know how to navigate things and or have, you know, the disabilities and it could, could walk you through how to do the different things. Uh, that's pretty special. That's not something that is um, as easy to do or find on an Apple TV, which, by the way, I think I think most people who have trouble navigating will find Apple TV remote control absolutely excruciating to use. My wife really doesn't like it. Um, the kids, I mean, they got used to it. They really like it. There are three or four, uh, here we go, three HDMI ports. Uh, they're all 4K60, which is really nice. The auto quality is fantastic, right? And that's because they have more room for speakers down below. Um, it's it's not a super duper thin TV, but it's not thick like an old school TV. And of course, this one has a built-in tuner, which is extra, uh, which is sometimes extra on other TV sets because they, I remember there's a period of time where they were thinking, well, look, everybody's going to be streaming anyway. So why bother additional costs putting in a tuner? Here I have a tuner. I mean, it's awesome uh, for $200 extra. And here we do pick up local TV channels through the antenna, which is nice. Okay. Uh, there is a way to cast stuff from certain apps and uh, and, and even your computer with certain um, applications or plugins. And that you can you can do to Roku. All right, that's, that's pretty cool. It's not quite like Chromecast. It's its own different type of system, similar but different. And honestly, I haven't tried it much okay i've only done it uh off to my dad's computers uh to my dad's tv once or twice in my life and it's it's worked you know it's there has been no issues all right so um here are some other things on i i, I feel like the menu system is a little bit convoluted for me but i think once you set it up and keep it very basic it's going to be easy for the whole family to use and that's a, that's something that i do appreciate but don't don't make the mistake that I did and go ahead and say that you pretty much like to watch everything because it's going to put like 80 to 100 channels on there of things you're going to have to sift through. I'm going to have to go in here and configure these things and move things around, which you can do. By the way, you can move the icons around. Um, but yeah, this is just way, way too many channels. So overall, I, I really have to say I... I'm, I'm impressed. Um, just like I said at the very beginning, I'm impressed at what I was able to get for $200. I'm, I'm sure there's almost no margin at the $200 price point. But the very fact that today in 2019, you can get a 55-inch 4K TV for $200 is is absolutely amazing, even for me. And I, I, go, to see, I go to CES every year, and I see all the, the fancy TV sets and with the ultra ultra duper super 4k with the with the four colors and 8k and now 16k screens it's insane we we're not quite there yet uh 200 we're right at the point where it is affordable for most families if they want a nice tv set to be able to get great resolution great sound on there and have a really great uh streaming media player built into the tv simply amazing for reference, uh, the TV that is above this one is a 60, I think a 60 some inch TV, 60 inch TV from Vizio. And I think we paid $600 for that. And that's only full HD. That wasn't even 4K. Um, keep in mind, this is back in 2014, I think, 2013 or 2014. And to go to a third of that price, better image quality, really high dynamic range, better sound, 
built-in tuner and everything, and a Roku for $200. Simply amazing. All right, so as I was looking online, I see that um, the going price right now, if you can even find one of these in stock, is $250. And I see that Walmart uh, may have had this in stock, but you know your mileage may vary. Okay, so um, it's going to be a little bit difficult to find. One thing I also noticed about this, about this particular set, was that uh, the price, the yearly SMA annual energy cost is higher, and it's higher than average, but it's also got full speakers, right? Like more sound coming out compared to some of the super thin ones, and it's got that Roku built in already too. So that just, you know, that, that definitely adds to the electricity cost, but still $24 for a year for the average household is pretty good. Okay, so I might do some more extensive screen testing on here if anybody's interested. I feel like uh, there are a lot of people who um, are not interested in that. I did that on a previous monitor. I didn't get that many views. I mean, some of you are really interested in it, some of you not so much. For $200, I think, I think we're less picky about the screen quality versus when I bought the five or $600 43 inch monitor. Uh, so, all right, let me know down in the comments if you'd be interested in seeing that. If not, just enjoy this TV set. Okay, thanks for watching. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year.